Hey guys, welcome back to Gymnastics for Dummies. This one's gonna be fun. So I got sent these videos to kind of dissect and analyze and go through from someone and she sent me about six videos, eight videos, something like that. But we're gonna go through about four vaults, two floor routines and two bar routines and I'm gonna break it up for you. This is for level four and you're gonna really see what we as judges are looking for. I have my code of points set out too. So you're gonna get an inside look of the code of points. Let's go ahead and jump into that video. Okay, so we're going to look at the first vault that was sent. So right here, you're going to see where her body position aligned with the angles that we have as judges. So I have my judging book and I'm gonna show y'all also kind of what those deductions look like. So you'll notice in this first body position, let's rewind just a little bit. See how she's a little arched, a little shoulder angle, and that little head out. So when we come to deductions, that arch in each phase, so that would be in the support phase, she's a little arched. So I have up to three tenths that I could take. Right there, I'd probably take a tenth and a half on her vault. Her head is out. Failure to maintain neutral head position up to a tenth. Her head sticking out, I would say pretty far, so I would take a full tenth there. So we're at two and a half tenths right now. And then you're gonna look at the shoulder angle, incorrect shoulder alignment up to two tenths. I'd probably take a tenth there, so we're at three and a half tenths. Now, what we're gonna get into, you're gonna notice that when you start the vault with this body position, it's gonna cause there to be not a lot of blocking because that shoulder angle is gonna kill your block, that arch, right? We want those shoulders to be really open. So I think open armpits, armpits pushing all the way up. Think of stretched out armpits. You know, there's multiple ways we could say this to kind of get the point across, but stretching out those armpits to where they're completely opened rather than them being almost covered by your arms. So because she's going to have not too much block, it's going to cause what you're about to see in a second right here, where her hands are leaving the vault. I know it's kind of hard to see because I, I dimmed this, but I, I, I think it's good enough. You can see where her body position is, here her hands leaving the table and where's her feet. Here's that 45 degree I told you about. So her leaving the table past 45, She's in this range. So we could take up to five and a half to one point in deduction. Now this is, I would say a degree past the 45. So I would probably take mm, around five and a half to six tenths in repulsion. So we could take six tenths, seven, eight, nine. You're looking at a nine and a half tenth deduction so far. Granted, this is again in slow motion and fast motion, normal motion with judges see. It's a little bit different, so you give or take a few tenths because of what the naked eye could see. But in stop motion, I want to point out every deduction so we can get the gist of what we're really looking for and what we're trying to train our eyes as judges to be able to see. And I know it comes off harsh, but you know what? At the end of the day, the judges are there to judge and critique the incorrect technique because that's going to help the gymnasts in the long run of... If we can correct the small techniques now, they're gonna be better gymnasts in the future. So we're correcting all of this little stuff right now. And that's what we wanna point out to the gymnast, especially in these lower compulsory levels that are there to help build them up to level 10, elite, whatever the case may be. So moving on from that, you can see her landing. She lands a little under rotated and takes a step back. What we're also going to deduct in her vault is she doesn't get much height off of the table because again, there's not much block happening. So we're gonna take a little bit of height and that's what you'll see right here. So going back to the angle of repulsion, you can see we have up to a point. Another thing that's gonna come into play is too long in support. Now, if she's leaving past this 45, we're gonna assume it's because she didn't get a good block. Now we're going into the too long in support deduction because if she's too long in support, that's why this angle was bad. Do y'all see how this stuff correlates? So when you go to a judge's table and you're upset about an 8-2 vault, you have to, and not saying that this vault was an 8-2, but I'm just saying for coaches in general, you have to, th to think about how everything connects. Okay, if I see her feet leave 
and her hands leave the table and her feet's here, she's way past 45. I know she didn't get a good block. So now I have to take too long in support. I probably take, I gauge it that if they're about 45 or under, I'll take at least half of that. So I'd probably take two and a half tenths for too long in support because she's past that half, that 45. So that's how I gauge it personally as judging. Again, this is, 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 is a hard thing to do as judges too because we have to gauge and be able to decipher how are we as judges going to consistently take the same deductions in every kids we see. Well, whenever I see a kid's feet go past that 45 and it's a little bit under, I'm probably gonna take at least two and a half tenths in support because there's there's clearly a long time in support. So hopefully that makes sense. So a little bit of too long in support is what we're gonna take. That angle of repulsion, repulsion is what we're gonna take. And sufficient height, I'd probably take around two and a half tenths as well. And then in the landing, she landed, um, she took a step, so it would be a tent. And I think that's pretty much it around her landing. So honestly, this vault for me, seeing it in the naked eye, I would probably go around eight, nine, eight, eight. Um, so, cause again, I'm seeing the shoulder angle, the arch, the head, the height, even a little distance, but I wouldn't take distance because her hands are at the front of the table and she lands right here. You are supposed to take into consideration the athlete's height. So I would not take distance on her because she does get pretty good distance, granted from where she lands and where her feet or her hands hit the table. So I wouldn't take distance on her, but I am gonna take height. I'm gonna take angle of repulsion. I'm gonna take dynamics. I'm gonna take shoulder angle, head, all of that stuff, so. Okay, and then the second vault looks pretty similar. She does the same arch. I would say this angle might be a little bit farther even from the last one, so. Her head is better in this one. Do you see how her armpits are actually open in this one? It's just a big arch right there, but her head and her shoulders are better. And then when she comes off the table, I don't think I can pause it right where she left off, but I would say the angle of repulsion is similar, maybe even a little bit better. So I would say this vault should probably go up at least a tenth or so um, from the last one. It's just that arch that she needs to work on. So I would say a good drill for that is, is you know, Heel drives, um, getting that lower back strong enough to withstand the heels kicking over the head. And I always tell my gymnast, imagine you're landing in a 45 degree handstand and you want to block into a handstand hold basically in the air. That way it keeps them from, from landing on the table like this because if her hands are already here and her feet are here, if you remember this graph, she's already past that point that we want to be. So her head's here, we want her feet here. But right now her head's here and her feet are probably where that 0.5 deduction is. So we're probably going to take another five tenths at least in the angle of repulsion for this vault. Let's see if I can pause it when she lets go. I don't know when she's going to. Aha. Okay, that's a little bit delayed. But yeah, it's going to be around the same angle as the five tenths. So really work on the heel drive. Work on a tight shoulder block so we can block up to the handstand rather than landing in handstand or past handstand because then it's just going to make that angle of repulsion past the degree that we want it to be. So again, I'd say with her landing, probably around a 9089 again. I think it was a little bit better than the last one. All right, now moving on to bars. I think her bar routine is actually pretty good. There's little stuff that I want to go over in one second, but for right now, we're just going to finish her routine, nice high tap swings. I really like her tap swings. There's some things I wanna mention on those tap swings though. We have a good strong kip. All right, going up to the cast. She has a good cast angle. So here in the book is where we want the cast angles to be, right here. And I would say she is right at that point. Only thing I would take is maybe a slight arch, but honestly, I have it paused again, and I don't think I would take much body position in her cast. Right there, I see a little bit of feet flex in her squat on. Right here, a little bit of knees bent in the pike of the kip. That cast we see is a little bit low, so see her cast, and then see this cast a little bit lower, so she's right in this little angle, so I'd probably only take a half a tenth, maybe a tenth on that. Um, that one, I, I would probably take a tenth. And where I gauge it, you're supposed to gauge it, you know, from shoulders to the lowest point. Well, her lowest point are going to be her feet right there. So I would take right about a tenth because we're looking at that horizontal line that she's missed. Hello. From that horizontal line. So I would probably take a tenth there. 
Um, going into her back hip circles, good. Tap swings are really big. Beautiful. I mean, this is a beautiful shape. Like I, I wish almost all. I wish all of my gymnasts had this. You see how much how high she is on that high bar with her tap swing, and that's something that is mentioned in the book is in the counter swing. Hips are not at a minimum of 30 degrees below the level of the bar horizontal failure to show a straight line. So that is exactly what they're talking about. They're talking about that that tap swing is like super low. Hers, she doesn't have that at all. She has really big, nice, high tap swing. So really good technique there. Feet are a little flexed. You see that as she's going past the bar. That one, she actually arches above the bar because I believe she's about to go into her dismount. But the last one she did, she had her feet just a little bit of, uh, just a little flex. And then going into that dismount right here, that is a good height that we want that dismount to start. You can see right here where we want that dismount to begin. And she is well above that. So super good. And do you see that bent elbow? That's something that we're going to take right there. So that bent elbow, we have up to three tenths to take and a bent elbow. So we want to make sure that that elbow is pretty straight um, along with, she does, you can see that second hand contacting the bar. So that's good. And then does she stick? Yes, she does. And then right there, I would just say being picky and some judges will be, <laughs> is um, really making sure she slides her heels together whenever she lands. So if you have a gymnast stick, make sure that they slide those heels together and then they can salute their judge just so the judge can't take feet apart landing. But I would say that was a really good routine, honestly, where I would score that routine at is probably at least a 9.5. Um, yeah, it was a good routine. I'd go probably around a 9.5 area for that score. All right, here's the second bar routine. That cast was a little bit low. So like we mentioned, it needs to be at that 45 degree or sorry, 90 degree. And um, that one was a little bit low. Right here, kip, a little bit of feet, a little bit low on that cast. Take another 10th there. A little pikey coming up when she comes up. You see how she's leading with her booty? We want that booty squeeze so tight that it's causing a curve. It's the same shape you see right here. See how she's rounded and not pikes because that little booty is tucked under. So if she can tuck that booty under just a little bit more, that deduction won't be there. So I would take probably half a tenth, a tenth for that little pike. And then right here going into the dismount, good shape, much better elbow, it sticks the landing from what I can see. So yeah, still again, around a nine, five, nine, six bar routine, nine, four, five, just depends. I can't really do all the math in my head, but I mean, a really solid bar routine, not really much to critique. It's just little stuff. All right, this one is going to be another vault video. I will say she's pretty consistent. <laughs> Almost all of her vaults look the same. And it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be the arch, the head out, the angle of repulsion. So let's see right here. See that shoulder angle? Look at that. Look at that arch. That's that's a that's a pretty that's a pretty good arch. So I'd probably take a tenth and a half again on the arch, maybe two. Those hands coming off. We're going to take another five tenths and angle of repulsion, a little step. Probably still looking at, again, around a high eight vault. Here's the second one. Much better arch shape, I think, on that second vault. Um, still looking at angle of repulsion and the height. Is this the first one? Yeah, that's the first one. So look at, let's look at the second one again. Look at her arch position. Much better, a little bit better arch. It looks much better in, in live motion, but um, I would say it is a better arch. Okay, much better hands coming off. That's that's a little bit closer to what we want to see. Again, remember looking at that angle. That I would probably take three to four tenths, better than the six tenths we were taking. So, um, and then just obviously too long on the table. I'm going to take a few tenths and then under rotation in that step of the ball. So same thing that we already mentioned. Like I said, she's consistent, which is good. Consistency is good, but we wanna make sure we're being consistently correct. That one, she just needs to fix a little bit of the arch angle, shoulder angle, and really working on getting a block off that table rather than just kind of flying over the table. And so she can get that angle of repulsion and that block deduction out of there. All right, now we're gonna move on to floor. She does have a very nice floor team. Starting off with the back walkover, I probably wouldn't take much. I would take a little stumble right there, so probably just footwork. Um, little stumble, half a tenth. 
Right here, going in a front walk over a cartwheel back extension roll, a little bit of knees bend, a little bit of feet, and a little bit of body position in that back extension roll. Let's watch that back extension roll again, and I'll show you what body position I mean. So a little bit of knees, see those little bit of feet flexing, and then right here, that body position. So that, that arch right there, she should be working on keeping those armpits again open, arms up all the way behind her ears and a mat, and she needs to think about pressing through the chest coming up in that back central rather than trying to press open through the lower back. That's gonna help that body position. Hits the vertical fine. Moving on to her half turn jump. Pretty good, prefer a little bit more height on that one. Going into her leaps, a little bit of back leg low in the leap. So I'd probably just take half a tenth for that angle. So let's watch that again. So I wanna, I wanna point out in that half turn jump. You see right here, see if I can pause it. Okay, oh, I barely missed it, let me try it again. And we're going to pause. Aha, okay, got it. So do you see, she hasn't even started jumping yet and she's already turning her feet. So a little, we call that, you know, cheating in gymnastics of like, she's trying to cheat the turn, meaning she's trying to already start the turn before she's even jumped it, just to make it easier. So I would probably take a little bit of angle deduction in that probably again half a tenth nothing major but it's just a little stuff that we're we're picking at right here in her sachets i think pretty good sometimes she she did one sachet where she went heel toe we really want to think about doing that sachet balls of our feet first and then heel very ballet like so instead of galloping like a horse we want to think in that sachet toe to heel toe to heel Okay, so I could take up to footwork with that. I could take up to three tenths in footwork. Um, that one I probably just would have marked on my page. And that's something that we as judges do. We just kind of make marks here and there of like we saw footwork here, footwork there. And we need um, quite a few footwork before we'll probably take a good amount. So I would, I would say nothing too major. Again, probably half a tenth on that. And then right there in that back leg for the leap, it was a little bit low in the 180. So notice if you can see the little, right there, that little feet flex, so right, boom. Little bit of back leg low during the leap. It doesn't, you wanna think about that going above her booty cheek, so I'd probably take half tint there. Thought straddle jump was good. I don't know if it's the video, her knee looked a, lot of, a little bit, but I won't take it, because I, I can't tell if that was just the video or not. Going into the full turn, let's see if she stays on releve. She does, good. She needs to snap that heel, kind of hard to see on video because she's far away, but she needs to rotate that heel all the way around so the ball of her foot is all the way turned. So she's a righty. So when she finished that turn, it was about right here and I need it all the way straight, just like she started. So maybe would have taken half a tenth on that, maybe just would depend on my angle as a judge, what I saw and blah, 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 but could take a half a tenth there if I wanted to. Round off to back handspring. Pretty good body position. I would just take a little bit of feet apart in the first back handspring. So let's watch that one more time. Going into round of back handspring. Good. So the feet flexed. I think it's whenever she was landing that her feet were apart. Let me watch it in fast motion. Sometimes watching it in slow motion is a little bit tricky because I'm trying to pause it and I can't. Okay. Let's try this again. Round of back handspring. Let's see where it was. Good, right there. Yeah, she flexes her feet right in here. Landing was good. So for this routine, oh my goodness, probably I would score her around a 9-4. I think it was a good routine. All right, moving on to the last floor routine. Let's see what she does a little bit similar. Nice back walkover. Much better. No stumbling there. Oh, all these people keep walking in front of her. Um, front handspring, feet a little, cartwheel a little, feet. A little bit better body position, misses her vertical a little bit. So I'd probably take a tenth on the body position, half a tenth there. I'm looking at around two and a half tenths right now. Better in that half turn jump. Footwork still a little bit, heel to toe. That leap looked better in her back leg. Um, straddle jump, you see how her legs just look a little bit sloppy in the air. So a little bit of bent knees, a little bit of loose feet. 
See right there, you can kind of see where she's bringing her knee. She's, I don't even know if you can see that. She's bending her knee to start the jump. So that to me, know, I know the, the thighs are a little loose. So we're gonna take a little bit knees, a little bit feet. And do you see when she landed her feet were apart and she had to scoot those feet together? So I'd probably take another half a tenth there. Definitely think these routines are even in different ways. Um, I'm probably at around a nine, six right now, nine, five, five. Turn, she's still, she's great on staying on releve, so that's really good, because that's tricky. So she just needs to keep finishing that heel. I'm right around a nine, five, little feet apart, little feet, little bent elbows, probably standing around a nine, three now because of that last pass. So like I mentioned in that last pass, let me go back and pause it. I would say her round off two back handspring from the first floor video was better, or maybe it was just a different angle. So, oh my goodness, pause. I cannot get this thing to pause sometimes. All right, let's go back a little. All right, round off. A little bit of knees apart right there, feet apart right there, feet apart, feet a little flexed. Oof, knees apart again, feet apart, feet apart. Do y'all see what I mean? Now it's quick in live motion, but I can see that it happened at some point. So that's what I'm deducting. And then landing was pretty good. All right, so as you can see, there's a lot of little stuff that goes into all of this technique, but it is for the better. These are the compulsory levels for a reason. These compulsory levels have to be so clean, so strong in order for those girls to get up to level 10 and elite. So it's very important that judges and coaches be nitpicky on these athletes because we're only there to make them better. Of course, we need to do it fairly. We need to do it consistently, but we're nitpicky for a reason because we're trying to have a very firm foundation, right? We need a firm foundation to build a house on or that house over the next 10 years. It's going to crumble. And it's not going to last. That's the same thing in gymnastics. We might be able to get these kids to level eight, nine one day, but one day they're not going to be able to get to level 10 because they truly didn't have that strong foundation. Their bodies are going to crumble. They're mentally going to break and it's not going to last. So it's very important for these levels to be really strong. So that's why it's important for judges to be nitpicky, for coaches to be nitpicky, and for us to be hard on the athletes in the best way possible because we're trying to make them better. So I hope you guys learned something. Comment below what you learned, what you'd like to see, or what your thoughts were. Again, nobody's a perfect coach. So let's help each other out and make each other better so we can make our athletes better. All right, like, subscribe, click the bell button, follow me on all social medias to keep up a date with me with what I'm posting and what I'm doing and what I'm going to be analyzing next. Please send me videos that you'd like for me to do as well. Don't forget that I also do judging analysis like this. I charge $5 per video. If you guys would like to do that, you can send it to me on Instagram, Facebook Messenger, or email, and then I will send you guys um, the payment info and all of that. But it's five bucks per routine. I get plenty of people sending me routines if you guys want to join in. I only will do levels nine and below because that is my technical judging ranking. I can do level 10 in college, um, but I won't charge for those because that's not technically my ranking yet. So it's not fair for me to do that. But my technical ranking is level nine and below. So any level nine or below routines that I do get sent to me, I charge that $5 fee. If you would like me to go into a more in-depth video, if you just want to send me a video for me to kind of analyze and not judge pick at, I do that completely free. And I also use that for my social medias as long as you've given me permission. So if you'd like to do that, just let me know, email me or message me on Instagram, but I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.